<laughs> I get Christmas cards from Con Ed. <laughs> I, I don't, but I should. You know, I've got three phase industrial power here. <laughs> I'm Tim Mullen, I'm an electrical engineer by trade. Uh, a long time ago, I started collecting early technology. This is the Ritter Model A. The Model B was shockproof, which tells you something about the Model A. Not only could you use it for teeth, but how to x-ray the sinuses. <laughs> Just put, the patient puts her face down on a plate of film and right through the brain. One of the reasons why I became an engineer is I've always had a fascination with what's inside the box, what makes the machines go. This is 1938, the Rolls-Royce of AM radios. This is a McMurdo Silver Masterpiece 6. Just gotta love that name. You know, a modern radio is gonna have much better performance. It'll beat the pants off, you know, anything, you know, from like the past, but it doesn't have that, that, that feel to it. You know, it's just, uh, that's something that's missing in today's stuff. There we go. Not bad for a name radio, right? I think one of the reasons why I started collecting a lot of this stuff is the aesthetic. It's a look unlike anything you'll find on this planet today. You know, I guess, well, why don't I just collect sculpture? You know, I don't know. Okay, I guess that doesn't do anything. You know, I mean, here you've got something which is almost alive, you know, gives off heat, gives off sound. Um, you know, take some like care and it is a beautiful piece of sculpture, you know, unlike anything else. You don't want to touch like the copper knife switch because it's high voltage DC, you know, which, you know, would kill you. This thing is shortwave ultraviolet. It will burn your face off. Uh, this is the gyro fan. They're kind of a dumb idea. They don't work as well as an ordinary fan, but they're just hypnotic to watch. Oh my god, that looks like a book. Cool, this is one of the world's most powerful supercharged blow dryers. Oil, replenish oil, like, you know, what's that say, like every four months, not you know? So much. Yeah. Not so much. I'm crazy. <laughs> and again, it's, it's, it's an addiction. Every hospital and surgeon assumes the ethical and legal responsibility for protecting patients and personnel against the hazards of operating room explosions. You know, that just ruins everybody's day. You want to know what makes it go. You know, want to know the secrets of the universe, you know, how these things are built. Yeah, it's Western, Western Electrics from 1918. And one does not take apart antiques, so the, the guts were saved, but they were refitted with Sennheiser uh, drivers. Hacking history. Am I going to get zapped? Like for a long time, I it didn't like join the modern world, uh, even though I, I work in you know, television and film of getting a flat screen TV, because it's kind of like, even when the things are turned off, they're ugly. This thing is a beast. Um, 30,000 volts running down the middle of that cable. But you get this magnificent 25 inch diagonal picture. That was huge back then. These are gadgets with personality. I mean, nowadays, everything looks the same. You know, I mean, all TVs, you know, have like, you know, a black frame around them and they're indistinguishable. You know, it used to be people were trying to come up with like wild looking cabinets and your know, radios that are just like Art Deco works of art or early motors that have like lion's paws, you know, for the feet, uh, the warm glow of vacuum tubes, you know, the magnificent cabinet design, you know, you know, things with exposed brushes, things with like, you know, pin striping and almost a glorification of the machine. This is a cold cathode x-ray tube and the way these were used is they'd be held in a stand like this and put against your chest and the doctor would look at your back with a fluoroscope. And you can adjust the mirrors like that, so that, like I said, when you're operating on the guy's brain, you had all these mirrors and you get light from all different angles so you didn't cast a shadow and, you know, remove the wrong part of the brain or whatever it was you were working on. I like to think like I'm somebody that collects art that happens to plug in and make sounds. And when do you plan on stopping? When I die. And I don't plan on dying. <laughs> Live forever or die trying. That's my motto. <laughs>